Kara. I'm the president and CEO of Galvanize Labs. And I'm Dyson, the COO of Galvanize Labs and lead beam designer of our new production, Take in Charge. Take in Charge is a browser-based technology education video game. It is very unique in this genre, as it brings fully educationally validated curriculum and teaching methods via game-based learning while at the same time offering players a high quality and very engaging gaming experience. Today, Maura and I are going to give you a first-hand look at what it's like to experience taking charge as a student, or player, while explaining the game's many features. There's a lot to see, so let's get started. But before we jump right into the game, let's first talk about the foundation of taking charge, particularly its curriculum. The team here at Galvanize Labs took a very unique approach to technology education in this aspect. The Take a Charge curriculum focuses on building the foundation for quality, long-term technology education, the building blocks. Before students attempt advanced technology topics like coding and game design, they must first learn and master the basics, the fundamentals. In school, they don't start a student's math education with long division. They start with numbers, then counting, then addition, subtraction, and so on. Progressive learning. Why should it be any different with technology? And that's exactly how Take in Charge teaches. Take in Charge teaches those technology topics that come before coding. Those topics include things such as internal computer hardware, operating system navigation, and internet functionality. We then take those beginner topics and build on them. For example, when a student has a baseline understanding of how the internet works, it's easier for them to more thoroughly grasp topics like Boolean search logic, networking, internet safety and protection, and cyberbullying. In taking charge, we're building knowledge, not just distributing curriculum. This style of progressive learning puts a strong emphasis on problem solving and critical thinking. Now, we get asked all the time, why these topics? And the answer is pretty simple. It's about getting students interested in technology as a subject, and more importantly, keeping them interested. Most of the members of the Galvanize Labs team spent the better part of the last decade teaching technology to youth students around the country. While most kids are comfortable with technology products, they are not, however, very comfortable with technology education and can become easily frustrated and ultimately walk away from tech ed, especially when they encounter a topic they consider too advanced or that they are simply not ready for. With our extensive field experience, we found that starting with the basics and more slowly and deliberately building their technology knowledge increased not only the student's enjoyment and satisfaction with technology education, but also increase their desire to continue their technology education. And that, of course, is a long-term goal of any quality tech ed program. Another important aspect of the Take in Charge curriculum is its educational validation. Galvanize Labs partnered with ISTE, the International Society for Technology and Education, to validate not only our game's technology curriculum, but also its teaching effectiveness. ISTE is the creator and governing body of the definitive education technology standards. The ISTE seal of alignment signifies a program's alignment with ISTE's rigorous standards for learning and teaching with technology. Take in Charge is the first and only video game to ever receive a seal and such technology education validation. Okay, now that we know what kind of curriculum the player or student is going to encounter and what our educational goal is, let's jump into the game and see how it's accomplished. As we mentioned before, Take in Charge is a browser-based video game. The only thing that a player needs in order to play the game is an internet connection, a web browser, and a fourth grade reading level. If you have those three things, you're ready to get started. You've seen the number of technology subjects that will be taught within Take in Charge. 17 different technology subjects to be exact. So as you can imagine, the game is quite large. Playing Take in Charge from beginning to end can take the average player anywhere from 14 to 18 hours and consists of 49 unique levels. The game follows the story of our three main characters, the siblings Siri, Adele, and Sunny. In the opening cinematic of our game, the player learns that a mysterious bad guy has stolen the sibling's dog, who of course is named Charge. The progression of our game follows the story of our characters as they embark upon an adventure to get their dog back. During the game, the player will have a chance to play as each of the three different main characters. Take in Charge offers players three different level types that they will interact with. We'll break them down for you. First is known as the Player Initiated Conversation, or PIC. These are screens where two characters are having a conversation with each other. They are known as Player Initiated Conversations because the conversation is moved forward by the player pressing the tap key to move to the next segment of the conversation. That way, the player controls the pace of the conversation based on their own reading level and speed. 
Player-initiated conversation levels are important for several reasons. First, they will assist the player in finding out what's happening in the storyline, and what they need to do next with their character to continue their journey to rescue Charge. This is also where a lot of learning takes place. During these conversations between characters, players will be learning about the technology topic that they will be encountering in the next several levels. These conversations give players the baseline knowledge they will need for the technology topic at hand. To demonstrate a player-initiated conversation, we're going to show you a conversation that centers around the topic of networking, or in this specific instance, networking equipment. Eventually, the player will learn how to assemble and secure several types of home networks, but the first thing they need to learn about is the equipment that they'll need. Here, the student is playing as the character Sonny. Sonny is having a conversation with Captain Sparrow. Now, we don't want to ruin the story for you, so we'll just focus on the educational components. Captain Sparrow requires some help with his internet, but the first thing he's going to need is some networking equipment. Captain Sparrow is explaining to Sonny just what he's going to need. So as you can see, Captain Sparrow calls out each individual networking device, along with a definition of its function. At the same time, a chat bubble over Sonny's head shows the player what the device looks like. The player is learning the names of the networking devices, what their functions are, and what they look like, all within the player-initiated conversation. That's the first step in the taking charge learning process. The next type of level is known as the side-scrolling level. Now, there's a lot going on in these side-scrolling levels. So first, we'll discuss how they contribute to the learning component of the game, and then we'll revisit their many other features. Most of Taken Charge's side-scrolling levels are designed to reinforce and expand on the knowledge that the player obtained in the previous player-initiated conversation. Let's demonstrate how that works in-game. Let's go back to the topic of networking. In the previous player-initiated conversation we demonstrated, Sonny was learning about different pieces of networking equipment, their functions, and what they look like from Captain Sparrow. In the side-scrolling level that follows that conversation, the game is going to reinforce that knowledge with the player. Now that Sonny knows the different networking hardware pieces, he needs to find them scattered about the docks. The player is in full control of Sonny in this level, moving him about the scene to find the needed items. The conversation window in the top right-hand corner of the screen instructs players to find certain items. When the player finds an item, they only need to touch it in order to pick it up. When the player picks up an item, a few things happen simultaneously. Notice that the screen freezes, so that nothing can happen to Sunny while the player reads what's on the screen. A window, known as a ding window, pops up in the center of the screen. This window identifies the item that the player has picked up. The ding window shows a large image of the picked up item as well as another description of its function. This allows the player another opportunity to learn about these pieces of networking equipment. Also, the item is automatically added to the player's inventory bar at the bottom of the screen. All picked up items will be added and kept in the player's inventory bar until they are needed. But as you can see, there's a lot more going on in these side-scrolling levels than just learning. This is where a lot of the action of the game takes place as well. In these levels, the player will get to exercise their gamer muscles and show off their moves with spectacular jumps over death pits, using jump pads to reach higher platforms, and avoid run-ins with minions that will send your character back to the previous save point. Also in side-scrolling levels, players will be given the chance to really run up their score by collecting the taken charge in-game currency known as jewels. Each small jewel adds one point to your overall score, while the big jewel adds ten points. So taking the time to grab those jewels only means good things, but it can be tricky. Players don't need to worry about getting lost within a side-scrolling level. We all know that sometimes players can get a little distracted while collecting points to run up their score. So just in case, Taken Charge has added a GPS arrow to give players a little nudge in the right direction for their next item. And the conversation window in the top right-hand corner will always remind the player what they should be looking for next. The third and final type of level offered within Taken Charge is arguably the most important, the mini-game assessment. Validating learning is one of the most significant features within the game. Not only are we teaching technology subjects and skill sets, the game is also able to validate and provide proof of successful learning. This is crucial to the ultimate success of the student, as well as to the progressive learning model that is utilized by Taken Charge. By stopping throughout the game to validate learning, we confirm that each student only progresses through the game when they can proficiently demonstrate understanding of each topic before moving on to a more advanced topic. This is a key feature of the Take in Charge learning environment and ensuring that each student's possible frustration level remains low.
Assessments can put a real damper on fun, so Taken Charge presents assessments via minigame. There are over 20 different minigame assessments within Taken Charge. Each minigame tests the knowledge that the player has learned over the previous two to five levels. The minigames are pass-fail, and players must pass the minigame in order to move on to the next level. If the player does not pass the assessment, they can either replay the minigame level, or if they feel like they need more time with the material, they can choose to replay the previous levels leading up to the minigame assessment. Players will get an unlimited number of attempts at the minigame until they pass it. Back to the topic of networking one more time. But be warned, we've jumped ahead a little so as not to give away all our secrets. In this assessment, we're incorporating what players have learned over four different levels, including two player-initiated conversation levels and two side-scrolling levels. We are combining their newly acquired knowledge of networking hardware, their functions, and their connectivity. In this minigame, players will essentially be setting up both a wired and wireless network. In the Blueprint minigame, players will be asked to place the appropriate device in its correct position within the networking setup. This is essentially a 10-question assessment, without using multiple choice or true and false questions. Players will also need to use critical thinking skills to combine the lessons from several levels to answer the questions in the assessment correctly. As we mentioned before, the Take in Charge curriculum teaches 17 different technology topics. Galvanize Labs has defined 36 different skill sets that players will acquire by completing all of the learning contained within Take in Charge. Each one of those skill sets aligns with one of our digital badges. Players can earn the digital badges by playing the learning levels, then successfully completing minigame assessments. For example, when we pass that last assessment, we earn the Network Ninja and Totally Tubular badges. These badges identifies the player's new skill sets of being able to completely set up and describe the function of both a wired and wireless home network. But as we mentioned before, there are over 20 different minigame assessments, and they come in many different varieties. For instance, take the Password Protection Technique minigame. This minigame assesses the player's understanding of what constitutes a strong password. This is an important skill to have today as more and more of our information is stored online, and understanding protection techniques is key. Who doesn't need this skill? Another great minigame assessment is our cyberbullying minigame. This minigame requires a player to analyze a social media post, gauge its threat level, and determine what is an appropriate response. Not only are there right and wrong answers in this minigame, but it also describes the consequences to the response chosen for each question. For example, any kind of retaliation to a social media post is never acceptable and always comes with serious ramifications from parents and schools, even in-game. This minigame is great for learning and practicing what to do if a player ever encounters cyberbullying in real life without having to experience it firsthand. There are numerous other assessments and levels like the previous few you just saw that make up the entire Take in Charge game. Through character conversations, entertaining and engaging side-scrolling gameplay, and a variety of minigames, it is no wonder that ISTE granted Take in Charge with the first seal of alignment for teaching and evaluating tech ed standards within a video game. The adventures of Siri, Adele, and Sunny are taking educational gaming towards a new revolution. Thanks for watching our gameplay walkthrough of Take in Charge. If you would like to continue the conversation and learn more about Take in Charge, visit us at the Take in Charge website, takeinchargegame.com, or reach out to the Galvanized Labs team at info at or on Facebook and Twitter 